Hello and thank you for joining us once again in our web series. My name is Michael. I'm a speech therapist with Providence Home Health and Hospice. We're located right here in Wichita, Kansas. Very, very happy to be with a local company uh, because it gives me the opportunity to be involved in our community. Um, we are focusing on, our, uh, on hospice during our next few uh, web installments and today I'm lucky enough to have our chaplain, Mr. Kitt, uh, who has just recently joined us. Uh, but we're excited to have him. He's got a lot of experience, not only as a chaplain, but also as a veteran. Uh, thank you for that service. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but what I'd like to do is just turn it over to Kit, because what I've found as my, in my time as a clinician is that chaplain is one of those uh, roles or positions that people don't often know much about when it comes to hospice. Uh, so I'd like him to clarify some of that. Uh, and if you've got questions afterwards, please feel free to comment below. But for now, Kit, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you uh, talk about what you do. Thank you. And my name is Kit. I am the chaplain here at Providence, and I'm excited to be here um, and uh, see some really fun times here. So uh, what does a chaplain do in the hospice realm? Um, what we are trained to do mostly is to sit and listen to people. Uh, we go in, we introduce ourselves, we get to know the patient a little bit, and then we sit and we listen to their stories and uh, they you have usually have wonderful stories to tell sometimes we get some very sad ones but we are uh, encouraged just to sit and listen and ask uh, some questions but let the family members and let the let the patient um, express their their uh, their uh, life story one of the other things we that we do is that we bring a calming presence into the room when we do sit and listen to people um, we just uh, let them just express themselves and we try to make sure that we keep everybody calm and uh, that way that the excitement of, of being on hospice isn't so overwhelming. The other thing that we do is that we take things slowly with, with our patients and our family members. Most of the other people that come into the hospice realm, the nurses, the home health aides, the social workers, they have to come in and they have all kinds of things to do. Nurses, vital signs, stay, check the meds, you know, and, you know, do some, do some of the stuff that they do. The home health aide comes in and they do their uh, bath, uh, give them the baths and they do the other stuff. And uh, sometimes they got to kind of come in, get things done and they have to leave. But as chaplains get to sit back and uh, we get to just take our time and take things slowly. Well, we get to go into some deeper conversations with the family and, and the patients also, uh, just to spend more time with them so that they feel comfortable with what's going on at the end of life. Um, and then also uh, we get to um, just help them process the grief that's going to be coming on, um, either the family member or the, or the patient. One thing that we do not do is we do not come in and preach and proselytize. We uh, accept people where they're at, with faith or without faith, uh, Catholic to Baptist to Buddhist to atheist. Um, we don't try to convert anybody. We just sit there and we listen. I like to listen to people's faith because their faith journey is totally different than mine. And uh, to let them know that their faith journey is okay and that they can still walk in their faith journey is something that everybody should do. And for those who don't have a faith, we sit and talk football, baseball, whatever they want to talk about, fishing. Um, we just sit and talk, and that way it gives them a, the, a calming presence of being a person instead of just another person. It's that I am there to be with them and to give them that time and give them that dignity of knowing that they're in a safe space. Some of the other things that we do is that we uh, support the family members. Uh, we just don't go in and see the patient, we see the family members because there are times that the patient is very accepting of their passing away coming soon and family members may have a challenge with that, especially young kids um, or uh, single, uh, single children in a household as an adult who's taking care of family members. Sometimes they don't know how to express that because they're so worried about all the other ins and outs of what's going on in hospice and the care that we that we provide so to sit there and give them a presence of knowing that it's okay and that um, I'm there to listen to them is, is vitally important for the grieving process 
of the person who's passed away and of the family. Well, I appreciate all of that. I've learned a couple of things now, and, and I think that your role is one that's maybe, uh, I don't know about undervalued, but uh, maybe just uh, people don't have a, a, a really good view on what you mm -hmm. do. So I appreciate what, uh, you know, some of that clarification. Uh, I do wonder, after uh, an individual passes, oftentimes family members need additional support. Mm -hmm. How long will we, or how long will you follow that family uh, during that grieving process? That's a good question. Um, we don't end at the time of death. Um, we are just at the beginning with the chaplain services and bereavement services. Um, we are uh, in contact with family members for the next 13 months. So we get through some of those, those times in life, the first birthday of the person um, after they pass, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, some of the major holidays, and then also past that first anniversary date of the person passing. We walk with the families with that through phone calls, through letters, and uh, if, if need be, uh, we will come out and see people in person on a bereavement assessment. And uh, if, if the person is being on the bereavement feels like they need more more help, then uh, we can uh, guide them and steer them into uh, um, some counseling that might help them out also. But uh, yeah, we sit there for the next 13 months and we work with them and we walk, walk with them also. I love that because our job is not really done just because a patient passes. Exactly. I love that. Uh, you know, speaking of when a patient does pass, one of the things I get asked often is, will a chaplain come out and sit with me during my final hours? Yes, we uh, we I do do the on call, and uh, if if a patient is passing and and the family feels like they need um, a chaplain there for uh, support and presence, we do offer that, and that's something that is very vitally important. I think in in the in the death process is that uh, when a chaplain gets to come in and just be that calming presence and be that 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 person who's got to know the the one who's passing away. Um, it's nice to know that they are there because there are lots of little things that happen at the end that um, as, as a chaplain in my role, I take care of um, along with the nursing staff. So, but yeah, I, it's no problem to be there. That's a good thing to do. Perfect. Well, again, we're so happy to have you with the team now. Um, I hope that this has clarified some things for you folks out there. I, hospice is a very sensitive subject, and I think the more we know um, and the better we educate ourselves, the better we can feel mm -hmm. when that time comes. So thank you, Kit, for your yep. time today. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please uh, leave us a, a comment below or uh, feel free to uh, send us a message. We will absolutely get back to you, uh, and uh, we'd love to clear anything up for you because, again, we know hospice can be difficult, uh, but we want it to be seen as a benefit. Uh, so thank you all for coming, uh, for joining us today. We appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much.